Pong. Everyone knows Pong. It's often credited as one of the first popular video games. It was revolutionary for its time, and captivated players when it was released way back in 1972. Some even say it single-handedly kickstarted the video game industry, leading to all this we have today. Or at least that's what Wikipedia told me. I was born in the year Mario Kart Double Dash came out. Do you really think I fully understand the impact and importance of Pong? That being said, I still appreciate Pong for what it did to the video game industry. But have you ever thought, what if Pong, but Grandma? And clearly someone has. And that someone was me! Yes, this game was actually made by me. Allow me to clarify. I'm taking a game design class in school right now, and it's pretty cool as far as high school art electives go. And for some reason, we're using Adobe Animate to make games in 2020, even though Flash support is set to end this year. Like, someone told the teacher that Flash is ending this year, and she actually didn't know, so... Anyway, since I made this game, I can fully explain its history. Our first game project for the year was, of course, Pong. I struggled a bit to come up with a theme for my Pong game, and by struggled, I mean I watched memes on YouTube instead of doing my work, but eventually it hit me. Two grandmas bouncing a cookie back and forth in a kitchen. It was super random, but somehow thematically made sense, you know, with the whole, well I wouldn't call it a stereotype, because those are usually negative, but the common idea that grandmas bake cookies, it just clicked for some reason. And so it began. I created all the graphics, and by created, I mean mostly traced from stock images, but the code was provided by the teacher, I just had to copy it. At one point I thought maybe it would be funny if the grandmas themselves were the paddles, and that probably would have been funnier, but I thought it would be amusing if it was semi-professional looking despite its wacky theme. Grandma Pong was released on whenever this video comes out, but it was originally completed in November of 2019. So since Grandma Pong is a free game that can be played in a browser made using Adobe Animate, which was previously Adobe Flash, that means that yes, it qualifies as a Flash game, and therefore qualifies to be reviewed. So let's do this. When you start the game, you're greeted with... Nothing. No title screen or logo or anything, just two spatulas, a cookie, and a background. Click anywhere to start. In Grandma Pong, you play as, go figure, a grandma, Betty. While playing, you only control her weapon of choice, a blue spatula, but when someone scores, she and her red spatula-wielding opponent, Rosa, appear as scorekeepers. Ah, uh, Betty. Probably some consciously named after Betty White because old woman. I actually put a surprising amount of thought into these characters. Their names both start with the same letter as the color of their spatula. Also, I was going to give Rosa a red apron to match her spatula and contrast Betty's blue one, but I forgot, I guess. And yes, Rosa is based on the same stock image model as the iconic Grandma Gun image. The background was what I spent the most time on by far. Again, it was traced from this image, but I tried to add little details. All of the graphics are filled with gradients, which doesn't really look that good, but the teacher wanted us to use gradients, so... This is by far the simplest game I've ever reviewed. It's Pong. What more can I really say? Well, this happens sometimes. So that's cool, I guess. To move the paddle, you move the mouse left and right. The longer you keep a rally going, the faster the cookie goes. It can get pretty intense. The first grandma to get to 10 points wins. You just play against the computer. There's no multiplayer, which unfortunately means the Grandma Pong competitive scene won't be taking off anytime soon. The hitboxes for the spatulas are bigger than the actual graphics, so it kinda looks off. The cookie can move in strange ways due to colliding with a wall and a spatula at the same time, or hitting the side of a spatula. The scorekeepers kind of get in the way of the game screen in my opinion, but it was a requirement to have them, so don't blame me. Also, the text they're holding up is supposed to be displayed in a cursive font, but I guess my computer doesn't have that font, so it just displays as a generic font. Font, so the text on the click to play again screen is cut off. There's no music at all, but there are cartoon boing sound effects when the cookie hits the spatulas or the wall. Good. There's also a crowd cheering sound when someone scores. I like to imagine that in this universe, two grandmas hitting a cookie back and forth is the most popular sporting event or something. Yeah, that's pretty much all I can say about Grandma Pong. I also made a garbage Mario themed puzzle game for extra credit called Mario Block Game. It's one of those games where you click on matching blocks and they fall and it's impossible and I can't even beat my own game and that's embarrassing. Yeah, anyway, for my first real video game, Pokey Meme You Don't Count, I'd say Grandma Pong is alright. It's also a great resume builder. After we finished them, everyone played each other's games, and Grandma Pong won second in the class vote for the most unique theme. I think it was pretty high in favorite game overall as well, my memory isn't that good. But yeah, Grandma Pong isn't terrible. Also, Betty for Smash. It's still the worst game I've ever reviewed though. The controls and graphics aren't very good, there's no music, and it's just way too simple. But all of these issues and more will be fixed in... Grandma Pong Deluxe! Featuring 12 playable grandmas, each with their own special abilities. 
local and online multiplayer, a full story mode, and music. This ain't your grandma's pong. Wait a minute. Uh, Grandma Pong Deluxe. Coming holiday 2036. Grandma Pong in real life.